All right, well, hello and welcome. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I'm Jamie Latipo. Um, I work with the evangelism department. I'm the associate director of evangelism and I just want to introduce you to my family um, by way of starting our time together. So this is my husband, Paul, and this is my son, Toby. And um, quarantine is an interesting thing with an almost two year old. So yesterday afternoon, he entertained us all by um, spinning for about 30 minutes. And so he just was dancing around and spinning and having the time of his life. So that is what our life is like. And he might dance himself in here at some point. Um, I hope not, but just so you know, that might happen. Um, I'm really excited about today. We're gonna to be talking about how you might lead a leader's meeting. And we're going to do that just by jumping in and actually having a little bit of a leader's meeting together. Before we do, let me walk you through three parts of the leaders meeting that I think we as staff are responsible for. So the first part of, a, of the leaders meeting that we're responsible for is caring for our student leaders um, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of all these um, unexpected changes, we need to provide some spiritual care for them. Um, secondly, we want to interpret the times, help them um, with what is God doing? What, what's happening to us, to our ministry, and how do we move forward? And then lastly, we need to coach our students to care for their networks. We need to help them think creatively about what their options are to care for InterVarsity students that have been a part of their Bible studies or have been under their leadership, and to think even beyond InterVarsity students, um, who are the people under their care. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just keep sharing my screen so you can see what I would be doing as the leader. And I'm going to ask five of you um, to be my leaders. Um, so Angela, will you drop in the leader meeting webinar doc? And I'm just gonna call on folks, um, Jennifer Vernon and Caleb uh, Farber, uh, Allison Stump, Julie, Messenger, Messenger, sorry, um, and Brian Ost, would you be my, uh, my leaders as we walk through this leaders meeting together? Give me a thumbs up if that's all right. Awesome. So I'm just going to jump in just like I would if I were gathering my leaders team and we'll go from there. So, all right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me in our first virtual leaders meeting. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you and I'm so grateful to serve alongside of you even in the midst of this chaotic time. So today is gonna to feel a little bit different than our typical leaders meeting. Um, I'm gonna have us use this Google Doc and I'm gonna drop that in the chat. And Angelo, if you would drop the link in the chat for me again, that'd be fantastic. Um, so we're gonna use this Google Doc and this is how we're gonna collect responses to different subjects as we talk through them. Um, so I'll kind of explain that more in depth um, as we go along. And then we're gonna use breakout rooms for people to actually verbally process together instead of trying to get such a large group talking all in this large communal space. Um, Google Docs are a little weird at first, uh, but it's the best way for us to participate when we have more than four people on the call. So it'll help us to have intimacy as a team together and move through some decisions we have to make. So uh, the rest of the time, we're going to be catching up and caring for one another. We're going to create a network map together, really think about who are the people that God has entrusted to us um, and under our care and then we're gonna brainstorm and think about how can we care for those folks uh, when we can't meet in person and make some plans moving forward. So that's the plan for today. Um, everything, uh, sound good, thumbs up? Awesome, fantastic. All right, well, I think first I just wanna name the fact that we are going through a bunch of unexpected transitions. I want us to be a team that can be honest with one another, that can um, actually share, of how um, how this is taking a toll on us. And to do that, I want you to jump in and put your name in this first table and just start typing. How, how are you amidst these unexpected transitions and what challenges are you facing? Um, so why don't we just start with that really quick? 
So those of you who just jumped on the call, we're just doing an example leaders meeting together. And we're gonna go through three different movements from just some student care. And then we're gonna be thinking a little bit about um, what is the moment we're in? And then lastly, we'll be brainstorming and making some plans together. And a few staff have jumped on and they're, um, they are modeling what might actually happen in your leaders meeting. So I'll just continue to share my screen. If you're one of my uh, staff who are trying to work in the Google Doc, you can always hit escape and then that will get you out of the large screen share and you can actually work alongside the Google Doc. But if you're leading, this is exactly what you're seeing. Awesome. Yeah, so just hearing like some of us are doing pretty well, doing okay, trying to figure out what to do with classes and coaching and just life rhythms disrupted. Others trying to figure out the mixture of family and ministry at home and being all on top of one another. Uh, missing some people. Yeah, I think that's, that's really true. I know we're in the midst of trying to move. And so we're trying to figure out how do we pack and work and care for our son um, all in the same space. So I'm going to actually send us into breakout rooms for just a couple of minutes. Um, and this will be a time for you to share with a partner uh, and to pray. And so here's what I want you to do. Each person gets two minutes to share and then two minutes uh, total to pray for the two of you. So go ahead and get out your phones and you can set a timer um, so that you're staying on track. And so we're gonna have a six minute breakout room, two minute share, two minute share, two minutes pray. And those of you who are just sort of watching along, let's go ahead and we'll all just share with each other for two minutes each and, um, and pray. And we'll be back in about six minutes. All right, welcome back everyone. Um, I hope the Lord is ministering to you even as you get to share with one another and pray for one another. Um, I, I want us to actually hear from the Lord together. I think this is good for us no matter what season we're in, but especially in, um, in this season, it's good for us to hear from the Lord. So I'm going to read Psalm 23. I'm going to read it twice. I want us to take it in and listen for a word or phrase that is meaningful for you, that stands out for you. Um, so for now, just uh, be in a posture of listening. So whether you want to close your eyes and just listen to the scripture, um, go ahead and, and just engage. So the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Holy Spirit, will you come and just draw out a word or phrase for us, uh, something that's meaningful for us that we can carry with us. So I'm going to read it one more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we'll just take a moment in silence. Jesus, thank you that you are good, that you are the one who is the good shepherd. We will lack for nothing. You provide for us, even in our uh, 
uh, as we walk through your darkest valleys. So Jesus, we, we give ourselves to you. We give the people we care to, to you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Why don't you jump into our second table, um, my five staff who are helping us, and would you write what word or phrase is speaking to you and what about it speaks to you? Um, and then secondarily, will you think about what's a habit that you want to start or can continue this week so that Jesus can be ministering to you deeply in this time? And Sorry, I'll share my screen again so everyone else can watch along more easily. Um, and I would also come in here and, and write alongside my student leaders. So I would share as well. That's wonderful. So just a couple of words that are standing out to our team. Fear no evil, um, lack nothing. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil. Um, and then for me, I lack nothing. So we'll just take another 30 seconds or so. Um, you can choose to give your students a little more time if you like. Um, come over to the second column and just name what's the habit you wanna continue or start this week. I tend to lead Zoom meetings at a fairly quick pace because dead time on Zoom just feels painful. And so it can feel like you're moving pretty quickly and that's, that's okay. Um, yeah, so let me just pray to kind of close this. So Jesus, thank you for the ways that you care, care for us. Help us to care for each other um, over this next week. Lord, would you bring to mind um, our team and ways that we can pray for one another. Um, we trust you. Amen. All right. Thanks for filling that out. So go ahead and finish that up. And I'm going to change the screen. Um, as I've been praying and thinking about what is the Lord doing, I continue to come back to this passage again and again. So this is from Acts 11, um, verses 19 through 21. And I just want um, to read it to us and to pull out just a couple observations. Um, so now those of those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So here, here are a couple of things that I have been kind of meditating on as I've been reading the scripture. So the first is that God is not surprised by the scattering of the church in Jerusalem. In fact, God uses the scattering of the church to advance his purposes. God isn't surprised that our universities have closed. He wants us to use this to advance his purposes and in our own lives personally and with everyone around us. So, the other thing I notice is God uses these unknown heroes to bring um, the faith to the Greeks. So they're the very first ones who, uh, who break the barrier that the gospel is only among the Jewish people and actually move into, into the Greeks. So it's, it's not the church leaders who embodied this part of God's plan. It was these, these nameless folks like you and like me. So revival, the, uh, revival can break out. And it does break out in Antioch. And it was the church that these folks started that actually was the church that developed Paul. So I wonder what revival opportunity God has for us. And then the third thing is that if we seek the Lord in this time of scattering, which is what we've done, we've been scattered all over. I think that he's going to care for us uh, deeply and use us in ways that we can't even imagine today. None of us have done ministry like this before. So we need to continue to depend deeply on the Lord and embrace the creativity that he has given our team uh, 
And over the next few weeks, we're gonna learn so much about how do we actually lead and um, do ministry this way. We're, and I'm calling us to be like these unknown heroes and to be brave and to go and to bring the gospel, to bring ministry to places and in ways that we've never done before. But I think God is gonna meet us in the midst of that. So the rest of our time together, we're gonna to be responding to this. We are going to get creative and trust that the Lord has given us the creativity we need. And we are gonna brainstorm. How are we going to care for the folks that God has put in our lives? All right? Awesome. So let's come back um, and I'm gonna send you into a breakout room in just a minute. And what I want you to do in the breakout room is just begin to brainstorm. What are the different networks that you're uh, connected to? So think about back at school, like the clubs that you are a part of, the classes, the other sort of niche groups. Think about the people who come to your Bible study, but think beyond that. Who are the people you're connected to? Maybe it's students at other, other campuses that don't have an university chapter. Maybe it's people at home. Um, so go ahead and just be creative. What are the networks that you're connected to? And then we'll come back and fill out this table. So this is gonna be just like two minutes, really short and sweet. All right, so jump into table three and go ahead, I've already put your names in there, but just start listing who are some students um, that you're connected to in your various networks. And then off to the right, um, tell us how they're connected. So some of them will be people that you've been caring for in your small groups or other ways that you lead in InterVarsity. Um, and some may be kind of beyond that, either friends from school or other connections. So we'll just take one minute and type in some names. It's all right if you don't get through everybody. So just a note, one reason why I like creating a network map at this point um, is because when we go to brainstorm, it's gonna make us a lot more um, specific about how do we care for these people. Um, and you can choose if you want to give it more time so that people are getting more than just a few names. But for the sake of just walking through it together, we're just going to jump in and do a few names um, a piece. Oh, I love it. I love like seeing names pop up. This is even a way that we can be praying together um, and just be praying for people by name. And then if this were a real leaders meeting, after I've given them a minute to write down names, I actually would send us in breakout rooms to just pray for all these folks. Um, we can save that uh, for the end if we wanna stop and pray for folks. So let's go ahead and jump into table four. And now I want us to think about what are some creative ways that we can actually care for um, the university students under our care and our non-Christian friends that are maybe at our university or, or beyond. Um, you can be thinking about ideas that uh, you can personally do, but you could also think of things that we could do as a whole team together. So just drop into table four, put your name, and just we'll do just a few minutes of ideas. And then I'm going to also jump in and share my ideas. So that way you get the whole team working together and we are part of the team. Jamie, could you screen share as you type? Yes, thank you for reminding me. Great. So Brian has a couple good ideas, encouraging texts, chapter-wide devotionals to promote unity, maybe an online Q&A. Caleb says online group games like Mafia, um, encourage group videos, chapter-wide prayer, and continued discipleship. Allison says calling people, sharing home workouts, um, sharing self-care tips like turning off the phone, breath prayer, worship songs. 
Julie says, calling them to see how they're doing, offering time of scripture reading and sharing, prayer in my Zoom room, um, and just share some of the other IV resources. Uh, a couple of my ideas was host an online fun night. Uh, so it's easy to bring university and non university folks together and give just a little break. Um, host online gigs um, or pray, create some prayer pairs. So I know that, you know, Julie is my person and I should, um, I need to check in on Julie every week. Okay, so what we're gonna do is come over to the right side, pick one idea that you like, um, preferably um, and not your own idea, and improve it or flesh it out. All right, so a couple of improvements. So online fun, um, choose a game, get a little bit more specific. Um, so maybe we need to stop and brainstorm some group games that allow for good sharing online. Um, let's see. We have some self-care tips, um, invite them to develop a rule of life or a rhythm of life. What are some specific soul care practices? Um, I improved encouraging text to like, what if we text or sent out a daily meditation that would be good for Christians and non-Christians, something that helps you focus on Jesus or focus on the peace that God offers. All right, so let's take these ideas and I'm gonna send us into breakout rooms and I want you to name what's the favorite idea. So what's, what would you like to do? Um, and if you need help, so if this is something like you wanna do online fun, but you don't want to try and host something by yourself, you want the team's help, will you name that in your breakout room and recruit your breakout room partner to help you? All right, let's go off for, let's just do two minutes to share since we're not actually gonna be making a plan. So just. Uh, maybe actually one minute to share and then we'll come back. All right, so last table for our, for our meeting today. Go ahead and jump down into table five and write down what's your plan and be specific. So um, you can refer back to your list in table three, like who are the people that you want to care for this week and what will you do, when will you do it, and what help do you need? Um, I would love to help you and I'm sure different members of our team, we can work together so that we can give excellent care to the InterVarsity students that we love and care for and our broader networks. I love your plans. And if we were doing this for real, I would read off some of your plans and I would help you figure out who's gonna be helping you, when are you guys gonna talk? And we would just take five minutes to do a little bit of calendaring and make sure everything was nice and tight. Um, and then I would end with two things. So one is a challenge that I think would be really easy for everyone to do right now. Um, and so my suggestion would be on your favorite social media platform, post something like, I'm praying for all my college friends and faculty today as we navigate online classes and other unexpected transitions, how can I pray for you? So this is a great way to just sort of throw out Annette and see who are the people that um, are, are responding to what God is doing, as well as just continue to actually exercise the authority God has given us to pray and care for folks. So I would do that. 
And then lastly, I would define what is student leadership today, uh, because it used to be host structures, and they might still be hosting their structures and doing Bible study. Those are good things, and we want them to do that. But we want it to be more than just lead your structure. And so I would say what your role really is, is to go deep with Jesus. It's to care for InterVarsity students. Um, and to care for our non-Christian friends. Those are the three things that we're going to be working on together again and again and again um, as, we, as we meet together. And then maybe we do one last little bit of prayer together, and that's the meeting in a nutshell. So now that we're out of our, uh, our fake leaders meeting, our potential leaders meeting, um, let me talk about a couple principles um, of leading on Zoom. So one is to prepare well. So make a minute by minute guide, um, mix in times for people to post and for breakout rooms. This helps, the, helps people to engage well with the content and not to get bored or distracted. And so I've actually been working on, working with this leader's guide and it's like two minutes. This is what I'm gonna say or my points. One minute, I'm gonna do this. 15 minutes, we're gonna do these things. And it just helps me to stay on track. Um, I'm not as practiced at Zoom meetings as I am as in-person meetings, so I need to be much more prepared to keep things going and moving because you just don't get the same interaction um, in the big group to keep things moving um, on Zoom as you do in person. All right, then the second one is lean into the mystery and ask students to respond to this gospel opportunity. Just in this last week, I've heard of people coming to know the Lord on Zoom. Yesterday, I got a text from friends who I thought were so far from Jesus, and they decided to follow Jesus, and they want to talk to me and my husband about what that means. There is an openness when all of a sudden our vulnerability is exposed we realize we actually do need something bigger. And so for better or for worse, the coronavirus is exposing the ways that we're vulnerable and our need for Jesus. Help our students to lean into that and to offer the gospel of peace, right? And then the last tip I have for leading on Zoom is help students take baby steps. Um, it's easy to feel frozen because I don't know how to lead Bible studies online. I've never done this before, but what we're going for is not perfect, but just make a movement forward. And so as you're helping them create their plans, just help them take one step um, forward and you can build on that in the weeks to come. All right, let me get my notes so I can figure out what it was we were going to do now. Sorry. All right, let's just jump in and post. Um, let's actually do this. What are you learning about leading an online, online leaders meeting and what do you want to apply with your leaders? So let's go back to the Google Doc and this time everyone can post, um, not just our five friends. And while you're posting for our friends um, who work with faculty, I think you can do this same rhythm with your faculty. So you can help them go deeper with Jesus and be ministered to by the Lord. You can help them think about their existing networks and uh, figure out what are some options they have to care for them. And then you can help them look beyond their networks um, to maybe faculty or friends that previously were closed but now are open. So whether you're leading in an undergrad context or a GFM context, I think these three pieces will work. All right, so some of the things that we're learning, um, it's fast pace and you need a tech sidekick. Yes, so let me say one word about a tech sidekick. I love having someone work on my tech when I have groups that are more than like five or six. It's a lot more, less overwhelming when you aren't being recorded and when it's just you and your leaders and you have a little bit of grace as um, you're moving from Google Doc to breakout room. 
But if you have a student who's, who would like to serve you in that way, I highly recommend it. It just takes off some of the pressure. Um, let's see. What are some other things? So learning to keep switching between formats and that's needed. It helps keep movement going. Um, encourage them to keep chasing the mission. Allow students to express how they're feeling. Let them get it out there and then help them engage deeper. Yep. Can I highlight one, Jamie? I like um, how everyone, uh, several people are thinking about guiding the time on Zoom and using a, a plan that's based on time. Um, both Jamie and I have a plan open that you guys can't see and we're both referencing it to make sure we're on track. And so I know what's coming and Jamie knows what's coming. It's probably one of the most helpful things to keeping this running smooth. So. Perfect. I love it. Um, let's see. Some things that you want to apply is um, use the breakout rooms, help them brainstorm, invite them to be part of the process of ministering to people's needs, network mapping and brainstorming. These are all great things. So let me give you just one more piece of content. So in the coming weeks, if you continue to use this three kind of pieces, care for your students, interpret the moment, and then help them engage and care for their networks. Um, you might want some other resources. So the evangelism department has put together three gigs that we're recommending for um, use online. That's a, another piece that you could give to your students and work through together and brainstorm who might you invite to participate in these kinds of conversations together and how would you use the gigs. Um, and then we also have a call to faith or a gospel summary, just because this is a moment where people are, ex are eager for the gospel and trying to learn what it means to follow Jesus. This is just a simple, short summary of the gospel and an invitation that students can use. They could literally share their screen and just walk through the PDF together. Uh, I know we probably haven't answered all of your questions about leading online or leading leaders online. So we have some office hours for you. So my office hours are Mondays from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2 to 3.30 Pacific. Um, Anna Lee Winans is Tuesdays from 4 to 5 Eastern. And Dave Palladino are, is Thursdays from 2 to 3. So we would love to... Um, take your questions and brainstorm with you or debrief what you've experienced and think about how you would try something different. We'd love to um, basically work with you and create a learning community. None of us are experts. This is uncharted waters for all of us, but together we can learn and we can minister well. So last thing to post, which is what was your favorite part of the call and any feedback you have from me, uh, things that I could have done better or ways that I can be serving you. There's a new table at the bottom of the Google Doc. Perfect. Um, one thing that I was going to share, I never responded on the Google Doc because I can't get it to work. And so just in case you had somebody in your group that didn't understand how to navigate around Zoom, um, that might be something that when you're coming together and meet with them for the first time on Zoom to explain more how to navigate around. Yeah, so, so tell me a little bit more. Um, so you like you're locked out of the Google Doc? I need to drop another. I don't, I don't know what was going on because I kept on trying to when you had it posted, I kept on trying to type on it and I hit twice and and everybody it's else is coming up. Going on. So that's why I finally I just I didn't respond on it because of that because I was like I can't figure out but if they think it's okay yeah I need to be careful if I'm leading something with them to make sure because I I work with all different ages yeah. at a community one thing you could do is send out the google doc in advance um so they can have it already up um you could email them and say 
you know, try and be on a laptop if possible. We'll have Zoom going and a Google Doc and, and be really uh, precise about here are the things that we're going to try and do so that they can work on it in advance to kind of figure out their tech um, issues. Um, you can also take a couple minutes in a call to help get someone on board or ask a student who's particularly tech savvy to just um, both of them take off their video and, and mute themselves for a minute and call that student and help them get set um, and then come back into the meeting. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone.